we have developed a simple but playable game. Now we need to find a way to break out of our infinite loop spawning our waves of hazards, end the game when the player is destroyed, and give our players the chance to restart a new game if they want to. As we prepare to end the game, we need to create two new labels. One to display Game Over, and the other to indicate when it's OK to restart the game. In an effort to keep our hierarchy organized, let's create an empty parent game object to hold our current score text and the two new labels we are about to create. Rename the game object Display Text and reset the game object's transform. Add score text to display text, making score text a child of display text. Next, create a new GUI text game object. Rename it Restart Text and change the text property to Restart Text. Change the transform position to 1, 1 on the X and Y. This should place the Restart Text up into the upper right corner but we can't see it. By adjusting the transform's position on the x-axis, we can drag Restart Text back into the game screen. But again, using the transform component for adjusting this fine detail on the GUI text label is not ideal. Let's leave the transform position x at 1. There are two adjustments that we can make in the GUI text component to better display our Restart Text label. The first is our anchor and alignment. Currently, these are set at default, or upper left and left. This is why we cannot see our label. The label is starting at the upper right of our screen and is drawn to the right from the left, so the label draws off the screen. Change the anchor and alignment properties to upper right and right. We can see our Restart Text label now draws to the left from the right, starting in the upper right corner. The second adjustment is to the Pixel Offset. Let's match the Pixel Offset on Restart Text to that of Score Text. We can have the same 10 pixel pad by setting the Pixel Offset to negative 10 and negative 10. Add Restart Text to Display Text to keep our hierarchy neat and tidy. Create another GUI text object and rename this one Game Over Text. Change the text property to Game Over Text. Change the anchor and alignment to Middle Center and Center and change the transform's position Y to 0 0.6, so it is in the middle of our screen, but up a bit. Now, add Game Over Text to our Display Text Parent Game Object. This sets up the basic GUI text objects that we will need to end our game. Next, we need to update our code on our Game Controller script. Open our Game Controller script for editing. We need to create references to our new GUI text components. Write public GUI text restart text and public GUI text game over text. We will feed information to these labels as the game progresses. To control what we send to these two labels and when we send it, we will need two related control flags or two Boolean variables. Let's write private bool for boolean game over and private bool restart these true false boolean flags will help us track when the game is over and when it is okay to restart the game we need to set the value for these at the start of the game so in start write game over equals false and restart equals false we also need to set the starting text on our new labels so let's write restart text dot text equals two empty quotes. The same for game over text dot text. Set this to two empty quotes as well. This means at the start of the game, these two GUI text labels will display nothing. 
these labels are effectively turned off. We need to change the state of our game and the content of these labels when our game is over. Much like adding our score, we need to expose a function here on our game controller for another object to call when the game is over. Let's create a new public function we can call from outside this script. Write public void game over. Our function will need no parameters. It simply gets called to end the game. Our game over function is very simple. First, we set our game over text dot text to game over. And then we set our game over flag to true. Now we will use our game over flag to break out of the infinite loop that spawns our hazards. The spawn loop is a while loop. The while loop will continue cycling through the code it holds until the statement in the parentheses is false. We have set this literally to true. So without help, this loop will never end. At the end of the loop, after we have waited for our wave to clear, but before we loop back to the top of our block of code, add if game over. And when written this way, we are saying the same thing as if game over is the same as true. Restart text dot text equals press R for restart. And again, within a string of text enclosed by double quotes, note that the R is enclosed by single quotes. This sets our restart label. Next, set our restart boolean flag to true. And lastly, write break. This will break us out of our while loop. And as there is no more code to execute in spawn waves after the break, it will end the spawn waves coroutine. In our restart text label, we have informed our player that they can restart the game by pressing the R key. We will now write the code that allows the player to do this. To easily capture a key press, let's poll for it in update. Write void update. And in the update function, write if restart. So if restart is true, we look for our key press with if input get key down, key code R. Now, if restart is true and we get a key press on the R key, we reload this scene by using application.loadLevel. Application.loadLevel loads the level or scene file specified in the parentheses. Instead of writing a string name or using an index number for that scene, we will simply use the currently loaded level by using application dot loaded level. That's it for this script. Save this script and return to Unity. We need to set up our new references that we have written on Game Controller. With Game Controller selected, drag the Restart Text Game Object onto the Restart Text slot on the Game Controller component. Next, drag the Game Over Text game object onto the Game Over Text slot on the Game Controller component. We are now done with our Game Controller. To end the game, we need to call Game Over on Game Controller when the player is destroyed. We could try to detect this on the player game object, but we have already written this code somewhere else. Our asteroid hazards already detect collisions with our player, and that collision destroys the player game object. Open the Destroy by Contact script for editing. In our Destroy by Contact code, we detect if other.tag is the same as player. Then, before we destroy the player game object, we instantiate the player explosion. After the line where we spawn the player explosion, write game controller, which is the variable holding the reference to our game controller instance, and with the dot call the game over function on game controller. Now, when we destroy the player game object, our game controller is told that the game is over. Save this script and return to Unity. Save the scene and enter play mode.
When the player is destroyed, we see the Game Over label. When the current wave clears the screen, we can restart by pressing the R key. And we're playing again. Note that the game doesn't instantly restart nor can we restart the level for a few moments while we wait for the screen to clear. This gives the player a clear sense that the game is over before restarting the level. Make sure that we have exited play mode. The last step in this assignment is to add a little more style to our GUI text labels. We will be using multi-object editing. Select both Restart Text and Score Text. These are the labels in the upper corners and change their font size to 20. Next, select the Game Over text and set its font size to 25. This will make these labels easier to read. Save the scene and enter play mode. Fantastic! Our game is complete. In the last assignment, we will build this game as a web player and deploy it to the web to play.